Alaska Community Development Agency, October 9, 2023. We're going to start with calling the meeting to order and having an invocation. Is um, Pastor Mulberry on Zoom? No. Um, Commissioner Borum, would you like to do the invocation, please? If you would like for me to. <laughs> if you would like for me to. All right. All right, hand. Well, the Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Most of all, thank you for your unconditional love. Dear God, continue to bless our community. Bless those who have been affected um, these past few weeks. Um, the Martinez, Martinez family, as well as the Holbrook family, and those that I don't know as well. Give us what we need to, to conduct this, or the order of this business, to help benefit our community. We ask these things in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Commissioner Campbell. Commissioner Campbell, please. Join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Ms. Krantz. Thank you. Commissioner Tammy McCaskill. Here. Commissioner Justin Campbell. Present. Commissioner Will Jones. Present. Commissioner Rufus Borum. Present. Mayor Robbie Correa. Present. Representative Teresa Jackson. Present. And not present for the record is Commissioner Terry Turner. Thank you. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes for August 14th, 2023? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. Before we move on to public comments, um, interim city manager Griffith, did you want to say something or do you want to wait? Madam Mayor, I'll just be speaking to the regular business. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to open the floor to public comments. Please limit your public comments to three minutes. Give your name and address for the record. And if you do um, want to submit a public comment, there are cards next to the door. Um, please fill one out. Illegal Kitchens. I'm sorry, what? She's going to comment on the agenda. Any general public comments? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Any regular, now we're on to regular business, discussion direction, Main Street program. City manager, interim city manager, excuse me. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you all may recall that we have talked about this a few times. Uh, at the last <laughs> meeting, it was tabled. Um, staff continued uh, the public input campaign and the results of that are in your packet. Um, I would also like to summarize because some of the question was around some of the previous successes of the Main Street program in Palaka. All I can speak to is um, what I witnessed uh, in my short time here. I can tell you that the Main Street program uh, primarily helped bring together volunteers and coordinated that activity. Some of the things that they accomplished uh, included uh, landscape improvements along St. John's Avenue corridor uh, and some of the adjacent parking lots. Uh, they did beautification days, trash pickup. They worked on some people's businesses, be it cleaning windows and pressure washing at times. They also served as an advisory committee uh, and a capacity related to the CRA grants. So they would review the CRA grants and provide scoring and input to the CRA board. Um, that's about it as far as I can recall. I mean, the Main Street program, you've had a full presentation on in previous meetings. And as I previously stated, you have the results um, of the public input campaign in your packet. Do you have any questions of me? Just to, to add it for the record, they, um, the Main Street program also put on a number of events downtown over time that were very popular. Um, Third Friday <clears throat> block parties, dance parties, um, we, the wine strolls, um, dessert strolls, other activities, um, and also partnering with several other organizations like for the Truck Art Festival and various other things. Um, the Enters in the Air fundraiser for public art, so on and on, but yeah, just to add that. And with that said, I'm going to open the floor to public comments on this particular topic before we discuss it further. Illegal Kitchens. Uh, 
Allegra Kitchens, 1027 South 12th Street, Palatka, Florida. I'll try to be very brief and even less than my three minutes. Uh, I'm against the Main Street program coming back. Fool me once, my fault. Fool me twice, fool me twice, your fool, fool me once, your fault. Fool, fool me twice, my fault. It didn't work the first time. It was here 30 odd years. It went away because it did not work. Yes, there were events, events that are put on by the city all the time anyway. Landscaping was, has been done by grants before and after Main Street. No big deal about that. It had volunteers, yes, but, uh, that, but that's the, the same volunteers who get out and do the same help with merchants if they wanted to. Main Street costs us money. It costs the city fees. It costs the city for the Main Street director. I talked to the merchants at the time, or rather they talked to me. I had never heard much, so much complaining from the merchants when I was on the commission then about the Main Street program. They hated it. Citizens came up and told me they hated it. I've told some citizens that it's coming back and they have a, they've had a fit. Of course, none of them are here today. They don't bother to come out. However, I think that's a big no. You don't need to do it, at least not right now. This is being rushed. The Main Street CRA director was put on the budget. The commission asked for it not to be. They were told they could leave it and take it off later. Now the Main Street discussion is coming up. Take your time, do more, do more looking into it. It doesn't have to be done today. And the other thing is that survey, I looked at that survey and I sent it in. It was very misleading. It, it should have said, do you want Main Street to be reinstated? Yes or no, not what will you do to help or will you help? It was geared toward a yes answer and to have a positive response from Main Street. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Jefferson. Tim Jefferson, 209 South 4th Street. I have a little tickle, so I'm keeping it to myself. I was lucky to be raised in a small town like Palatka outside Indianapolis, Indiana. And it had a main street with a brick, just like this one, and storefronts and so forth. And people from the, the big city came out for the day. And they would come have lunch, and they would spend their money. And then that led to a house tour. And uh, many of them moved there, like our family did. And so I think that we need to reach out beyond 10 miles, reach out to uh, Augustine, Jacksonville. We need to get in Southern Living Magazine and get some articles written about Falaka and, and create a brand. I mean, and I think it's either food, art, activities. So a lot of that's already happening. But when you come into town, I've only been here six months, it doesn't have a very good entrance. So we need to work on making it a little more attractive. And um, I want to volunteer in many things. I was in Vermont at the Historical Society um, board for 10 years and uh, they had a plant sale. Everybody's got plants and they would just split them and sell them once, you know, 4th of July weekend or something. And uh, other ladies would just take from the garden club, would take theirs and put them in the flower boxes around town. So it doesn't have to take a lot of money, I don't think. What it takes is communication and people coming together. This Saturday, there's a, it's called Conversations and Coffee or something like that in Hastings at nine o'clock at the library. And I think we need to have some discussions like that and get a big white, get a big whiteboard ideas. What costs money? What doesn't cost money? Maybe somebody wants to underwrite it. Maybe they don't. Maybe we can get funds for it. But we've got to talk about this because it's not going to get any better. I'm sorry. It's not going to get any better. You've got to change something in order to get a positive result. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ma Mayor, yeah. that's just a clarifying question because I don't want to assume. Are you for or are you against? Because I, I, you were heading in a direction and then I just want to make right, sure. Definitely. Thank you. Lynn Robeson. Uh, Lynn Robertson, 410 South 9th Street, Alaska, Florida. Thank you for letting me speak. I've lived in a lot of places. I've helped a lot of renovation get started in communities. The Riverside Avondale Preservation Society, my neighborhood in Miami, the designated MIMO Hood. Alaska is a beautiful place. And I think that Palatka could prosper even more 
if we had a an attractive and lively downtown. People are going to come here for history, for the river, to watch birds, to bicycle. I don't think they're going to come for food, but um, there's money in the budget for this gentleman or woman or whoever is the coordinator. You have to have a director of any program. Otherwise, it's chaos. And while I'm up here, I'd like to say I am firmly against the reconfiguration of Hawkins Street. Thank well, you. Well, you can come back and talk about that. Thank you. <laughs> Jerry Hafner. Jerry Hafner, 122 uh, Hilty Lane in East Palatka. I really hadn't uh, intended to talk today. I thought there was going to be some kind of a presentation too, but uh, a couple of things I will mention. There was a mention of downtown merchants hating the Main Street program. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The Main Street program would help the, the downtown merchants more than anything that could be done in this town. And I'm not really sure. I'd like to see the list of those who hate us. I really would. Um, I've been working with Main Street for, I don't know, at least 20 years, um, a long time. Uh, and I don't like feeling like my all of the efforts that I put in as a volunteer are going to be just totally thrown out the window and wasted. There are a lot of other people in that same position that have put in many, many hours here in Palatka uh, to try to get some things going. Uh, I think one of the big problems with the Main Street program is you really have to have support, not of just the city commission, but you need to have support from the big businesses. I say big businesses, the business people in this town, the influencers, just use that term. Um, I know when we had Main Street going, we try to do different events and things, and whether we advertise them or whatever, they'd never come. You know, it, it just amazes me. They all sit home and they wonder why nothing's happening in this town. Well, it's because they never show up. Um, I can tell you there are a lot of folks like me who really want to see Platka revived. Uh, I think I mentioned the last time I was here. When I was here in the 60s and 70s, Downtown Placo was just a thriving, thriving metropolis, really good stuff. Um, and today there's you know very little down there, nothing exciting anymore. We need to do something to reinstitute the excitement of downtown Placo. Uh, somebody mentioned the, the lack of, you know, we needed a better entrances and stuff. Well, thunder, uh, our city manager, Jonathan, uh, could speak to that because there were times that we put together plans for really nice entry signs coming into both ends of town. And, and, and I know we've got some of the signage going in downtown now, uh, but we need more of it. Uh, we do need to do some things out of town as well to bring folks here. Uh, but I think first things first, you've got to, got to get the folks here in Platka interested in making this town do something again. Once you've done that, then I think we can start drawing from out of town. Uh, with that, I think I'll just sit down and be quiet and listen to everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cheryl Roach. Cheryl Roach, 312 Dodge Street. Uh, I am for it. I know that um, it was not launched well. I don't think it was accepted well um, initially. Um, the presentation was not the best uh, that was um, brought forward a few months ago. After a lot of thought and consideration, um, I think the only option we have, if we are going to have a CRA director, we need to have a Main Street combo. Um, it has been questioned more than once as to the um, validity of either and neither of them being worth the um, manpower or the money, but as a combination, I do know that it could do much for our city. Um, it is time to move forward. The negativity of past on all levels needs to stop. And to hear that Hastings is, is thriving with their Main Street program and, and getting uh, press and, and acknowledgements and you drive down 207 and you see signs about upcoming events and then you come home and you drive down St. John's and there's like nothing happening. It's actually uh, uh, unacceptable at this point. Um, it, is, it is time to come together as a community and that involves the commissioners as well as business leaders and uh, residents to unify 
and go in one direction. Um, we are we are imploding if we don't come together with this. So uh, I am certainly for it, and I do hope that you do consider it, and I am for a CRA slash Main Street director. Thank you. Thank you. Brooke Sloan. Uh, Brock Sloan, 2000 Reed Street, Palatka, Florida. Uh, I agree with some of the prior comments. I uh, would like to share with you that I would be in support of a Main Street manager position. I think when it comes to dollars and y'all have decisions to make, sometimes you can make a bad investment. Sometimes you can have the wrong person in the wrong seat. Sometimes your community supports you, sometimes they don't. I think right now what we have it's a unique time. It's a time to make investment. It's a time to ask the community to step up. It's time to get the very best person we can get for that position. And we should have a high expectation so that the city and its citizens and its taxpayers can get a return on the investment. I support Main Street for downtown. I think the time is now. Uh, I say that I'm supporting it personally. As a business person, making investments in downtown that's what the city's asked for for the 33 years that I've been here. I think it's now. Thank you very much. Sally O'Hara. Hello, uh, I'm Sally O'Hara, 3025 Kings Road, St. John's County. I am a property holder in Putnam County. Um, I've been a Main Street uh, coordinator and affiliated with the program since 2011. And uh, I ran and directed Volana Beach Main Street. I am currently the vice president of the Florida Downtown Association, and we assist the other 57 Main Streets throughout the state of Florida. In January, Hastings decided that they wanted to form a nonprofit and pursue uh, the Main Street designation. So uh, within the space of nine months, we have turned the community um, activism around uh, what was once a dissolved, uh, unincorporated town has now a voice with the county commission. They are in full support of our Main Street application, of which we will defend in Tallahassee on October 25th. So we are very proud to move forward and we have full faith and confidence we will receive designation and become a member of the Main Street community. Having served over the last decade and a half or so, I've seen the proven results return on investment that every Main Street community has. Some are fine, some have problems, you have personalities coming and going, but the strategy, the full point process is a proven fact since 1985 that it works nationwide of which there are 2000 in the nation. So what it does, it gives a voice uh, to the community it allows the volunteerism, activism, and investment in the business community to turn things around. Uh, it is also, with our connection in Hastings, we would like to develop a regional connectivity between Palaka, Hastings, Crescent City, St. Augustine, as far as the Volano Main Street. The trail is a perfect connector. The Florida East Coast Railway made that possible many, many decades ago. So Main Street uh, designation and the reactivization of Main Street will allow you to apply for grants without um, burdensome match requirements and so forth. So it opens up many opportunities. So yes, please support Main Street moving forward, whether it's in conjunction with the CRA or a standalone, whichever way you go, but it does uh, stimulate the community. Thank you. All the applause. Jenna Dennis. Good evening. Thank you for your time. My name is Jenna Dennis. I'm a property owner here in city of Plotka, but I'm also board chair for Hastings Main Street Inc. I think um, we are incredibly excited about the partnership between Palatka Main Street, what we hope will be Palatka Main Street. Yes, sir. Pardon me, but you say you live in the city of Palatka? No, sir, I'm a property owner here. Yes, sir. May I have their address for the record, Madam Mayor? Absolutely, 208 Please. North 6th Street and 600 Reed Street. 
I'm sorry, Jenna, go on. That's okay. So um, my, what I was saying was as the main street director, I'm sorry, the main street executive chair, um, we are incredibly excited about the potential partnership between Palatka main street. I think the difference between what may have been previously and what is now is timing. Timing is everything. We are in a very different economic situation, a very different cultural situation than we were years ago. We have a region of main streets that are coming together, excited about the opportunity. Main Street offers so much potential, everything from, it really shouldn't be costing money as much as giving you opportunities for funding all of the improvements you're wanting to do. There's a lot of grant opportunities and the Main Street designation opens up doors for that. It also provides education, but it provides a sense of comradeship between other communities as well. So we um, have made tremendous progress in our little community and we'd love to work with you guys and see how we can help facilitate and support yours as well. So please, we do ask that you vote for the Hastings or for the Palatka Main Street as well. Thank you. Andrea Conover. Hi everyone, Andrea Conover. I live at 105 Rivers Edge Drive in East Palaka. I've lived here for seven years now, having moved from St. John's County to our cute little town on the river. Um, I bought the Coca-Cola building five years ago and made a big investment and opened Azalea City Brewing Company um, almost three years ago. We're having our anniversary on Thanksgiving weekend. Um, I honestly thought we'd have more going on in Palatka by now. Um, I didn't think I'd still be in this position wishing um, there was more going on. Um, we still have such um, still so many negative impressions in the city if you read on social media. Um, people are always complaining and I'm, I'm jealous of what's going on in Melrose and Wilaka and Crescent City and Hastings and I pass by Hastings a lot since I go to yoga there and um, live in East Palaka, but it's not even a town anymore. <laughs> for, for heaven's sakes, Palaka is the county seat for Putnam. Um, I think we can't depend on the hit or miss efforts that we've been having depending on different volunteer groups to do events. Sometimes they do them, sometimes they don't. Um, I think if um, we make this investment to have a Main Street director, um, I'm in favor of spending the money, even though it'll take away um, funds from the CRA, which could give us grants. And I did get a, um, a small grant when we first opened a recruitment grant. I got $30,000 and I know I could apply for more as we expand our business. But um, I really think this would be a, a best investment um, for funds from the CRA. So to some, in case you didn't know, I'm in favor of us rejoining the Main Street program. Thank you. Is there anybody else here for public comment? Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> So I'm Tiffany Parker Flanders. This is attacking. And I own the Golden Pineapple at 220 St. John's Avenue. I actually am an East Palaka resident. So I do hair all day, have people come in all day. And they always talk about how they wish there was more going on in downtown. And it's so frustrating because we don't have anything going on and I can't tell them, oh, this is coming, this is happening. Occasionally we'll have the wine stroll, which is wonderful, we love that. But it, and then when we do have the wine stroll, we get so many people in and they are like, we didn't know anything was happening down here. We didn't have a clue anything was happening. So I feel like the Main Street program is very important to get the word out that downtown is still a viable street with you know, lots of businesses. So I'll fill this out. Thank you, I'm for it. Any, um, okay, and because we're gonna wrap this up shortly. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Amani Klein. I live at 103 Lucy Court, Satsuma, Florida. Um, I'm for the Main Street program. I think it will be really good for us all to come together and actually support this program. Um, it will help the community 
And obviously the last couple of years, it was tough with COVID and everything like that. And so I think that's what kind of made it not as successful as it can be right now. We have so many people that have moved to this county, have moved to this region, that why not support this effort? And um, I think it's just good for to, to rally behind the public and the people because they also want it. Um, and I think it would be a good thing. That's all. Thank you. Is there anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, I'm closing public comment. Discussion? Commissioner Campbell, do you have anything you'd like to say? Um, do we have a clearly defined role? There is a job description. I'm not finished. Okay, I'm sorry. And responsibilities um, and who this person will report to. I know that I've had some questions in previous conversations with regards to this being a dual role, if it would be a dual role in the legalities of that and if it's something that's even possible before I make any decision on anything, I would like that information to be provided to me because as of now, I have not received any information with that. And I think overall that will help me better make my decision with regards to this main street position. Would you like to say anything or do you want to sit in? I want it Mr. provided Griffith. in writing. No, yes, I understand that. No, I'm just, I'm giving Mr. Griffith the opportunity to answer whether there is anything in writing or not and what to, thank you. I guess not, um, no. Well, Mayor, commissioners, board members, um, all I would say, and I can provide this in writing is that the dual role is permissible. Uh, from the standpoint of legality and what Florida Main Street would permit. Uh, in terms of the goals, uh, that would come from the board. So the board would basically set a budget and annual goals for the CRA and Main Street would be a part of that. So you'd have the Main Street organization and those volunteers would advise through the Main Street manager to the CRA board and the CRA board would set a budget and goals that would support those, those action items that we'd like to see accomplished on an annual basis. Um, Commissioner Campbell, um, permissible, is it permissible? And what the goal would be, was that your two things? Overall, okay. Well, that'd be a question for our attorney. Where is she? That was the question. Doing this meeting. That, that was the direction that it was given to in our last conversation. Okay. It was given to provide us with the legalities of it so that we wouldn't be at this point. And I would have preferred to have had that information coming into this meeting, being that we are going to discuss it and the decision has to be made or direction to be given. It's hard to give direction when we've requested information and not receive the information that will help us give the direction in which we desire. I don't want it to appear as if I'm against or for it at this moment. I am for making sure that before I make a decision, it's informed so that I have all the information that I can when I make a decision. And as of now, I do not have all the information that I've requested to make this decision or give direction. I just request, I still didn't get an answer. Where is the attorney? She's <laughs> off, sir. She's scheduled to be off. So your previous counsel advised that it was permissible. Uh, and I apologize. I mean, looking Meeting. at the minutes, I do not see that directive. That's what I usually refer to when I prepare for these meetings. Uh, but again, I can get you that answer quickly in writing um, if that's the pleasure of the board. And that, that was a request that directed that Commissioner Campbell asked. It was a directive. So I'm yes. sorry that it was missed in the minutes, but that I think that's something that we would need and would be recommended for us to review prior to us making this decision. Commissioner Borman, do you have anything else? Do I have anything to say? Yes, do you, I didn't know if you had any other questions. Well, did you ask, did you uh, yeah, I have something to say. Um, and I think everyone that got up and spoke, whether it was in favor or not, but I, <clears throat> in listening, Listening to everyone, I heard things like wine scrolls, doing things downtown that 
we could actually, we have a department, cultural affairs, that actually is responsible for doing those kind of things. Uh, what I haven't had since I've been up here is people coming asking to have any of those particular things going on. And I don't recall Mr. Cutright bringing those things forward saying uh, there have been a request for wine scroll, street closings downtown, any promotional things from anyone downtown. I can't recall it. Um, I think that we also, we've hired a public information officer that one of his jobs is to promote Palaka. He hasn't been on the job that long. So we haven't given that opportunity to him to promote Palaka. And I think that that's something that we should think about going forward. Um, we're hiring a lot of positions, and I think you guys seen 22 up on the board in our last budget session. And uh, I raised questions at that point. What does these people do? Okay, so before we uh, front load and hire and pay for a lot of positions that we don't clearly have their roles defined, I think Commissioner Kimball asked a, a valid question. Uh, we need to know those things. We also need to, the legal question that we ask, an opinion to the attorney that is currently on payroll would suffice for me. And the direction, given direction, you guys are kind of like asking us to do things in the blind. And we had a commission that I think was more than capable that was here before us. They did away with the Main Street program. I would like to hear from them. I heard from Ms. Kitchen. I would like to know. I'm hearing from uh, stakeholders, but not many residents that actually live in the, the city of Palaka. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I think those that really know me know that I, I like the holistic approach. Main Street, you guys feel this place for Main Street, downtown Palaka. But we have some areas that we, we, we need to get a city manager in here that's gonna, that I would like to see the city manager start. Um, actually, carrying out our five year, 10 year plan that we already have in place. This Main Street manage, manager position in uh, downtown redevelopment, it actually leapfrogged a lot of things that we had on the, on the burners uh, prior. And it's doing that right now. Um, a lot of projects that we haven't seen through, but we, we, we're jumping around without getting some closure on some of the things that I think, I'm not gonna say, I say just as important. How about that? That's just as important. That don't mean I'm for or against it, but I would like to hear from people who want those CRA grants that hadn't got an opportunity to secure any and see how they feel about not being able to secure some of those grants for as much money as some people have received in the past because some of that money is gonna be going to the CRA or Main Street Manager. Wouldn't that be where the money come from? Some of this money? Uh, it, well, it's all coming from the CRA Same. fund, but um, we did have line items on the budget specifically for the programs and that is still there. And we've always set a cap on those budget line items. So that, that is still available to people to apply for in the upcoming fiscal year, excuse me. <clears throat> that has nothing, well, it has, it's all coming from the same funding, but it, they, they are different line items. And so those items are still covered. Still coming from the same funding. Um, and I appreciate everybody's input. Um, as I listen, <clears throat> it means a lot that you care enough, but we all care. But I just wanted to put that in the minds of the commission as well, that we did make those hires. We do have people on payroll that are responsible for doing some of the job that a Main Street manager would do. That's all I have to say. Commissioner Borum. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm of the same thought process of both um, Commissioner Campbell as well as Commissioner Harvey. Jones. Yeah, please don't talk while the meeting's going on. Thank you. 
Well, yes, I'm, I'm of the same thought process of um, Commissioner Campbell as well as uh, Commissioner Jones. You know, in addition to, um, to that, I, know I heard people saying that um, Palatka, um, the entry into Palatka um, is not welcoming. Um, I've heard a number of different things negative about Palatka, but Palatka has had a number of events that brought record numbers of people here. And I, I guess if I can just get uh, a list of the things, I, I, I'm not going to put our, our cultural arts um, director on the spot and ask for any information. But uh, going forward, I'd like to maybe get a, a list of the number of things that we have had down, downtown on the riverfront uh, and along uh, um, St. John's Avenue in terms of the things that we do have here. So I, 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 when, when, when I hear people um, speak negative and say that we don't have things, I beg to differ. I know you guys want this program, but it's got to be something that will work for the community. It's got to be something that is um, fiscally viable for the community. I'm all for things that work, that make sense, that's logical. We did have the program prior to. There were some issues. How are we going to correct those things that we dealt with during that time? And since that time, we've hired, hired like I said, we have, we've hired a number of people. We plug people in positions that may not even work functionally to make the city operate efficiently, effectively, and uh, from a cost pers perspective, among other things. So. I'm all for making whatever works for the city to help draw people here. I'm all about economic development, but I'm not about wasting taxpayer dollar. Um, again, we've, I've heard a lot of good things, but what are the things that were challenges for the same Main Street program? What were some of the challenges if somebody can remember some of those? Let's talk about those things. We got to put everything on the table. We just can't just bring be one-sided when we talk about this. And, and again, this is coming to the commission as well as the, um, the board really, really fast. We just got through the budget. The budget is still hot. And this is before uh, the CRA board, like right now, without the information we need to carry forward with a, with a, with a good decision. And so with that being said, um, you know, we've had a number of events, Bassmaster Elite, um, Blue Crab Festival, the Azalea Festival, all of these different things that we have here that comes here in, in, um, in addition to the things that we have with cultural arts that we have throughout the city all the time. So, again, I just want you guys to understand and know I'm not against this program, but I do want to know, make sure that we have some performance metrics in place that we know that this program, if it's voted for, that it's going to work and it's going to be working to, to help benefit our community. Uh, that's all I have. Commissioner McCaskill. I don't, I don't know if I want to say that it's a lot of negativity or if it's a lack of knowledge. I think a lot of us in here, um, I'm not saying if I'm for it or against it either, but it's a lot of business folk here at the table. And but we all should be familiar with a SWOT analysis. I think that'd be a good strategy that we could all use if we could all get to the table and look at our strength, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats with this Main Street program. So again, the main thing that I'm hearing too is time. Time is of the essence. Um, a lot of us may feel no. A lot of us may feel that now is the time, but we still need everything, uh, all the knowledge that we need to, in, in order to make an informed decision. We're asking for knowledge. Uh, we asked for things from our um, attorney that was previously here, and we need that same information from the one that we have on board now. That's something that we need. We have the information that you all brought before us, so if we all get that and have it together, we can make some good informed decisions. We just want to make sure that what we do and the decisions that we make at your cost works. So we ask what we gave you all the same opportunities for us to make some good informed decisions. So again, I'm not for it or against it. I'm not saying whether or not I'm for it or against it, but I just want to make sure that we have all the knowledge at the table in order to make a good decision. 
Ms. Jackson. I have to agree with the other commissioners. I mean, you definitely need a complete picture before you can finalize anything. Um, I hear what everyone is saying. Um, so I'm definitely taking that into uh, big consideration, but I do feel that this program is a bit rushed. I do feel that if there's positions in place, I mean, we have a public uh, PR person that is in place, you know, what is the role for that person? What are they going to be doing? So it sounds like there's um, seats that being filled with different people that are actually being paid um, through the city, from my understanding. I mean, am I right with that? Am I, is that correct information? So let's see where that goes. Why do this have to be voted on today? I mean, it's not going anywhere. The budget is here. Uh, and let's get all the facts uh, before we make, make our final decision. That's where I'm at with it. Thank you. Um... I respect everybody on the, on the board's thoughts, um, and I'm very familiar with the Main Street program. I think that also it's not just St. John's Avenue. It includes from Madison to uh, the south side of Laurel, from 11th to the riverfront, and that will be the whole district that the CRA director will cover, as well as from the, the CRA director will cover that, as well as the two adjacent North and South TIF districts and the Main Street will cover that downtown core business district. So it, it is a larger area. There are different tasks. The public information office job description is available too, and it is different than the Main Street director, which has several other option, uh, responsibilities. Um, also, it was brought up in the strategic plan as well, the reinstatement of Main Street, and that came up um, from the community as a want. But again, if the board needs more information to make informed decision, then that makes perfect sense. Commissioner Borum. Oh, uh, my question was that, yeah, you, you mentioned about the position would um, cover both um, the, the, the North. The CRA director. South, director. Central. Yeah. Um, as well as being the Main Street Director. Director as well. And I thought that's where some of the issues came about as it relate from a legal standpoint. Could that happen? And I think that's the information that at okay. least I know I'm looking for. And I think that's what the the board heard. And so if we can. And I, and I wasn't it, disagreeing with that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm talking right now. That's what I thought I heard. So. That's uh, and that's where the question came in as it relates to can that position do both be the main street manager as well as the CRA uh, person. So that's what. But even to further just kind of see what we have on paper outside of that, it's not even clearly defined if we're looking for the main street director slash the CRA. So again, it's still hard for us to make a decision because it's not clear to us what it is that the city is looking to have. So if we're looking to have the CRA manager, I mean, if we're looking to have the main street manager, what is now going to be the CRA? So like, that's my confusion as well. Like, it's not clearly defined what it is that we're holistically looking for. I don't want to have bits and pieces when I need the whole plate to be what I need to know. And so that's where my haste is to pump the brakes and give us clearly what it is that you're asking for and not give us bits and pieces. And then we all look back and be like, okay, this was just a cluster. So that's where my halt is at that moment, because we're talking about a CRA director. I mean, we're talking about a Main Street program, but then we're also bringing CRA director in as well. So that's a great deal of confusion. Any further discussion? I just have, I have a thought, something for you guys to think about as we ponder this. We do know that we recently approved and hired an assistant city manager, a position that didn't exist years ago, right? Correct? So 
Currently, the CRA workload is delegated to the assistant city manager and project manager. Were we aware? We're very aware of what's, what's been going on, yes. Okay. So, so, also the assistant city manager hold the Florida Redevelopment Association Redevelopment Administrator designation and the project manager holds an FRA Redevelopment Professional designation. No other city, personnel, or person hold that designation. So what this is saying is, we approve the position. Someone's hired in that position right now, but temporarily that person is the interim city manager. We have yet to see the assistant city manager perform that job. And we'll talk about hiring another person. Think about it. Think about what we're doing. That's all I don't want you to ponder on. Okay, and just for clarification, the um, project manager is no longer employed by the city that has the FRA credentials. She's on the, she's on the, but she's employed. For short term. It's she's not, employed. But for short term, it's she's not a long employed. term. But short term, it's not intended to be long term. But I would like minute. to offer some clarification to those statements because there is some truth in them and I just, I, I want it to be out in the public. So the project manager that holds that des designation is currently employed on a part-time basis as we transition with her replacement. Her replacement, most likely, and the prime candidate right now, does not have that same designation that she holds. I have been primarily responsible for the CRA for more than five plus years as a designee of the city manager. So that wasn't something that just happened with my appointment to assistant city manager. So just kind of wanted to put that out there. That was the only you know, correction I would make to uh, Commissioner Jones' comments. Yes, Commissioner Barr. Well, yeah, I just, I just, I just think I know we, we, we have a lot of positions again, like, like um, the commission said. Uh, but here's what we got. Generally, uh, you have your city manager uh, is over the C well, he's the CRA or the What's the the position reports to the CR the, the 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 city manager generally the position normally support or report to the city manager correct the yes, right yes so then when we got now we'll have a assistant city manager which now that position will report to so you can see how we're constantly adding layers we're adding layers where responsibility and we have not the city has not grown that much more and our um, positions have not grown that much more other than the 20, the 19 positions that we, that was just budgeted for in addition to what we had. So again, looking at how we need to make sure that when we plug in a position that we know that those positions are performing those duties. And I thought we, somewhat cleared some of those positions up when we did the uh, um the study when we when we did the new salary study that we paid the funding for uh and, and we got a lot of those things cleared up so i don't recall seeing some of those things as part of that being cleared up in the new salary uh study that we've had with the new positions that we have from the, the last year Mayor, can yes, I, so um, Commissioner Borum, uh, board members, it is true we had a salary study and part of that salary study was a uh, job classification. They did a survey of what everyone thought what was their job, the tasks that they were primarily performing, what they were doing out of class. And basically we made some corrections with job descriptions and titles, and then we slotted compared to market. That was the salary study. When it comes to the CRA, your CRA plan, which is adopted, appoints the city manager as the CRA director. I think the memo that Commissioner Jones was referring to just a few minutes ago, which I authored for you, uh, which told you who was performing the majority of those daily tasks, it fell to me in my previous role and assistant city manager. However, I think I tried to point out in that memorandum 
something you can look at. Uh, you can look at your budget and you can look at the utilization of the budget lines. And it, sometimes it'll show you when you're not performing or you're not utilizing the full budget. Something that we've seen over the past couple of years is we've been very successful in getting capital projects and larger initiatives going, and we've grown as an organization. However, we're still not spending more than 50% of the TIF funds on an annual basis. Now, per statute, we have to spend them within a certain number of years or the taxing agent agencies, the city and the county can request them back. So it was a point I was trying to make in that memorandum is we're doing good, but we don't have enough people on our team to fully spend down the budget and achieve your CRA plan. I'm just kind of looking forward a little bit. And that was the comment related to, if you don't think we need to move forward with the Main Street uh, program, I still believe, and the rest of your staff still believes that there's a need for a CRA director or a manager, because there's some good things that we could do for all three TIF districts. That just proves my point that the state and again, it goes back to my statement. What is it that you really want of us? Because right now we're having the conversation of Main Street program, not the conversation about a CRA manager. What is it that you want from us? That's what I want to get down to the bottom of so that we are able to make a decision on what's best for the need at hand. And as of now, we wouldn't be able to make a direct make any direction because it's not provided on our agenda. So, uh, Commissioner, here's what I propose to do. I've got some directions from you all. Uh, you obviously uh, would like to have your new council weigh in and give an opinion on the legality of the hybrid role. Uh, in terms of the goals, I think I just got a little bit more clarification. You'd like to see what your staff thinks that we need to be doing and does these two roles or hybrid role achieve that? To be more specific about what it is we're trying to achieve, correct? Okay. And then um, you asked who would they answer to? I can put that in a written response as well. Uh, the structure in the past and the one that I would propose is that any position, CRA director, Main Street manager, hybrid or separate, would report through the city manager and then to the CRA board and the city commission. That's the structure of the city's charter, and that's the structure that works best to oversee staff members on a daily basis. Um, and then I'm also going to do a review of the Main Street uh, CRA director job description just to make sure that those goals are clearly spelled out in there. And then we'll bring this back before your next meeting. Let me ask one more question. Are there any other cities, towns, villages, whatever, that falls or has the CRA manager slash Main Street? Yes, program? sir. And we'll, we'll bring that list back for you as well. Thank you. Um, you, you you didn't put like, uh, you know, the, the performance metrics in there in terms of goal settings for that role. What are we trying to accomplish? You know, we're trying to grow more, grow our businesses. We, try, we need to see something in there that you can measure by as opposed to just doing activities. Any further discussion or questions? Okay. Uh, 
just going to go over the details. So this is a small Jeremy, I'm going to want to report to the lane. I'm just asking for a few days. I think it's not going to pass on the council. It's going to improve their permitting process. This is their department. By doing all the design work ahead of time and uh, the structural steels in place, the first floor is uh, completely finished and now traveling. Uh, their problem will be $200,000 in, which uh, is more than, than we anticipated in spending on the entire project. So we, we exceeded the grant requirement on the structural, structural steel piece alone, but unfortunately, the grant requires the permit be closed out before we could ask for reimbursement. So I'm asking for a 90 day extension uh, so we can accomplish that. Motion to the part of the comments, I just want to see if any, any, of, your, any of the folks commissioners had um, any further questions or comments. Okay. Um, do you have a public comment on this particular item? Does anybody have a public comment? Seeing that public comment, do we have a motion? Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Discussion, direction, reconfiguration of Falkin Street, short grill, and go out to Lark Street. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this item has come up previously. Um, it came up this year in some of the conversations with the neighborhood about some things they'd like to see uh, within their TIF district. Um, so I decided to put it on here just for discussion purposes. Um, 
I'll go into the reasoning in a second, but just so you understand the process and be familiar with this, if you want to move forward with this, um, we would then reach out to one of our engineering firms, which is on our short list. Um, we most likely go to the number two firm uh, because we've looked at their skill sets and, and this is more in line with their qualifications. We'd ask them for a scope and fee. Uh, and as long as that fell within a reasonable budget, which is somewhere between 10 and $20,000, we would ask them based upon direction from this board um, to look at the traffic pattern uh, surrounding short to Hawkins Street or the diagonal section of Creole from 9th Street to Laurel Street. So I think everyone is familiar um, with the traffic pattern there. Uh, that road is primarily used as a shortcut for individuals that are traveling over the Memorial Bridge and they do not want to go the route of 9th Street to Reed Street. Um, this at times has caused issues with people rolling through the stop sign at Short Krill and Laurel Street or speeding down Short Krill or down Laurel Street. Uh, that is a, a neighborhood, uh, and again, I mean, Ninth Street is a mix of residential and commercial as well, um, but it has come up enough for staff to bring it before you to see if it is your desire to move forward with getting a traffic study to see if there are some solutions that we could utilize future CRA dollars to address. Could you enlarge that, please? I'm going to turn the aerial on, too. Yeah. Turn the aerial on, Sonny, the presentation I sent you has a. Mr. Griffin, that asked me to pull this up. Is it time to pull up our presentation at this time? Please, So, you know, while she's bringing it up, it'll just show a real simplified view. And again, we're not proposing any solutions or ideas, but it's clear that the traffic uh, is an issue there. It's going to continue to grow. So the, the, um, the question is posed is to authorize us um, reaching out for, for a scope and work order on a, on a traffic study. So if you go to the next page, you can see you're pretty simply what we're talking about is Grill Avenue, where it makes a left 90, turns into 90. And then short curl continues continues on. And then as you continue down that, you hit what I call um, you know seven corners here in Palatka. You hit that corner right on that seven, you know, the second circle there. And why why are staff suggesting the traffic study? Um, the speeds uh, on that street are way beyond the uh, speed limit on short curl is 25 miles an hour. People, and we've all done it personally, you're coming down curl under the underpass, downhill, the speed limit there is 35, which almost, you know, consistently the traffic is going way faster and people do not slow down whenever they they hit that turn. Um, just the volume of traffic, I can tell you that between 7 and 7.30, that, you know, just a rough traffic count, 70% of the people coming down the grill take that um, angle through there to cut through uh, the um, South Historic District. Hmm. Yeah, it's poor visibility. Whenever you come out of the curl, you come out and make a uh, right hand turn. I mean, you cannot see the traffic coming at you, your traffic to the left and the traffic to the right very easily. People come out. I mean, I, I actually walk through that area pretty consistently. It always involves, um, you know, it's, you know, jump rabbit starts, wheeling the tires. I mean, people are, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's a challenge. And it is a confusing traffic pattern. I mean, there's nobody, typically people don't signal whether they're going left or right. So they come down there and, you know, you're, you're, you know, they just kind of sway one way or the other. And then, unfortunately, a lot of people are finding this route desirable because there, there's only one stop sign. It's at Laurel. Mm -hmm. So you hit that and it's a lot of uh, palacoline truck traffic that hits that, <laughs> hits that stop sign and then has no impediment from there to the uh, you know, to the river. So, it, you know, it is marked with no through traffic, but in fact has become a thoroughfare and as we all know, the clock grows, so it's just going to be uh, continued. If you go to the next slide, a couple of interesting pictures. This is a truck mm -hmm. at the corner. I mean, it just, there's no way. And a lot of um, the amount of truck traffic that comes down night, I ensure everybody sat in that is directing that way. It's showing up as a uh, state road. I mean, Walmart delivery, it is not local deliveries. It is major truck traffic uh, going through. 
And then the other, the picture in the lower right is just simply the, um, you know, the, the, the uh, corner of that floor. Okay. So, Peter, did you have something? I sent some video. Mm -hmm. I did. Well, all right. It's just going to Um, that. Those are those are my overview overview charts. It concludes those. Well, I need to see Hawker Street. We go where you talk about it. The, the street that's in question, I want to see it. That's why I asked that one. I don't. Short Quill Hawkins. Short Quill. I guess it was. Well, I'm about to highlight it. it was right. Hawkins yeah. Yeah. Pull up the uh, the PowerPoint. Yeah, that's the advantage of like there's a lot of people that are better around this things that are made for on the map. On the map there, sir, it says Krill Avenue. On the flat map, it says Hawkins Street. I believe okay. So now that you brought me to the location again, sorry, I don't know about past Hawkins. So what are you proposing to what the proposal again? It, it, the, the proposal is simply to authorize the next step of the traffic study, which is Jonathan said we would reach out, get a scope and D that would come back before the board. But, you know, and they would address, they would give us some real data there in terms of speed, volume of traffic, visibility, etc. So, traffic study, we couldn't get that from DOT. We can have them perform one of those. Has that happened in the past at all? They did it for me. Uh, we could request them to do a study at the intersection of the DOT corridor. So where the larger circle is on the screen. Yes, sir. Which would cost us, right? Well, we'd have to ask. Uh, so I'm not saying they would agree to it, but it is something we could do is we could reach out to our district chief coordinator and ask. Personally, I think I would like to see us do that first, but it's up to of course, but and so also down by the school, uh, the old school board. I know that was the old school board. Seventh uh, Street, where you showed the last picture, son. Can you pull that back up? So, what are you suggesting there? I, I think the young lady that just went back, she mentioned about a roundabout, but not at that area. That's not the location she was talking about. Right? No. Okay. I, I, there's been a lot of ideas and suggestions about traffic calming um, assessment. I, I don't think we're ready to suggest an alternative. We're just trying to get the foundation work, get the information, get the data, and then use that as a decision making tool going forward. So, so we could do, you, you mentioned the big circle that we could do, ask to do, excuse me, ask the DOT to do a traffic study. We couldn't do it at that. Location as well as, as Krill is still. We can ask for anything. Well, I think well, that would be the time frame. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, would it be? Yeah. I think what would be the time frame? For, I'm, I'm not against asking them um, if it's going to save us, but I don't want to further drive this down the road if they're going to just kind of put us on the back burner with the request. Well, we can we can ask. You know, Commissioner, we could see if it's likely that they would do it, how long it would take, and to what degree they would do a study. Uh, those are that's all information that we could request. They may push us the route of going towards uh, one of their programs, like the Transportation Alternative Program, which would be a grant. And if we got a grant, you'd have to wait approximately a year. Uh, but I don't know that without asking, and I'm more than happy to have a conversation with our district group rep. As you ask a question, could you also ask, have there been any previous studies that have been done that they may be able to provide us as well? Anything else, Kevin? Yeah, I know, I know DOT, they, they look to try to have zero accidents as their goal, but that's unrealistic. Um, even though that's a pretty, that is a very, very dangerous uh, intersection, I, I think. Um, Coming out of there is 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 super awkward. Uh, I think coming, I, I think it, I might offer up just looking at maybe do not enter coming into that route. You know, as people are coming from Creel from the west to east, once you come under the underpass, you know, some of them have a pretty decent speed. So when you're getting ready to enter into neighborhood to that route, I just think they should just at least remain on um, Creole 
at least until they get to the next row that they can make a right into that uh, intersection. So put a do not enter. I mean, that's just a, a suggestion not to enter in that way. It's going to have to run. And, and that's that, certainly been one of the suggestions. That right. You know, that too, but it was, it's coming out of that road as well because I was on the yeah, right today coming up night right. and that person was coming up the short lower road and right. they just sped out and had the pump on break. So right. it's the it's entering and right. exiting. Right. No, that was the same thing I was saying coming out of that was the biggest concern that I had. Ms. Jackson? <laughs> I'm going to open the floor to public comment and I have some pods here. Um, bring me in, please. Bring me in 815 Wall Street. I didn't really want to go first, but I will. Uh, it's a very dangerous intersection once you come off the curve at Frill and as Ms. Gano mentioned from Frill to Laurel, anytime between 5.30 in the morning till eight o'clock. It's not, you know, you've got the plaque to lean, you've got everybody hauling butt through there, blowing through the stop signs. And I know Chief Scott has patrol there occasionally, but it's, it's, it's not working. It continues not to work. A comment I think was just made as to staying on Krill at the curve, and then making a right onto Laurel, another big mistake. No, no, I, I, I just made her just a comment. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just throwing it. I'm throwing it out there because I am on that portion right. of Laurel, right. and it's bad enough every morning when the school bus comes flying through there, taking that corner, and then you get everybody else right behind them hauling butt on the direct side coming from the river to Short Krill. Right there at Seventh Street and Kirkland, that mess there, it's a blind spot. I think that island, all, the, all that vegetation needs to be completely taken out of there. Someone needs to go to the Baptist property and do something with their trees and stuff. I know they cut them back a long time ago, but it's a very serious blind spot. And I almost got hit the other morning because somebody was not paying attention to running through stop sign there. At a short grill and laurel and set. I'm all for making things happen there. I mean, it's been going on for years, short grill. That sign's been up. And I've traveled that area for years coming through there. It does not save time cutting through instead of going up to ninth to the traffic light or cutting down laurel. But I also would implore or ask Chief Shaw to put a little more patrol on laurel streets. Throughout the day, it's not just you know seven o'clock in the morning. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. The school, but the school property, again, that's used as a drop-off for kids and a pickup in the morning. And people come flying through there. You know, the bus is stopped, and all of a sudden you've got somebody wanting to take short krill to head to big krill. It's just it, there's going to be a major accident there sometimes. And I hate to say that, but. We need to come up with some viable concept. And I'm not going to like this concept, but depending on which way a decision is made, rumble strips really should be on that section to slow these people down. And again, Ms. Cano has property there. I live behind it. There's other people here that live close to it. We hear it from 5.30 in the morning. Those trucks and everything coming barreling through, same way with the semis. There's no reason why semis should be coming down Laurel Street. Thank you. So you, do you think that the do not enter sign would help? I, I, again, I mean, you've got no through traffic signs. People are not going to read the signs. Because they're going so fast. Yeah, but still. Yeah. You still have some. Thank you. Thank you. It's still Ms. Kitchens? I leave with kids just 1027 South 12 Suite. With all due respect to everybody, uh, I happened to have, be out early in the morning uh, last week at 7.30. I get the dentist at 8 o'clock. Traffic was unbelievable. Mosley Avenue, Hudson Avenue, Frill Avenue, uh, Liberal Drive, all over black. I could not believe it. 
bumper to bumper as far as you can see. And as far as laying stop signs, they're laying stop signs all over black, because this is no exception. Good luck on getting them stopped. Now, yes, I'm very familiar with Hawkins Street. 76 and a half years ago, I lived with Hawkins Street. When I was first born, my parents rented an apartment there. Later in the 50s, my cousins lived beside Larry Beaton, with, which is a vacant lot now. So I'm very familiar with Hawkins Street. It has not been Hawkins Street since for about 60 plus years. It is Quill Avenue. It is not short Quill. There's no such thing as short Quill, like there's never a short Laurel. It's Quill Avenue. Why is it still called Hawkins? Because in the 1800s up until the 1960s, we had named streets in Black, Butler Street, Fletcher Street, Hampton Street, etc. Then in the 60s, the post, early 60s, around 62, the post office said, we want you to get rid of all the named streets and go to numbers. So they changed some of the numbers of the streets. And in the case of Hawkins Street, Quill Avenue, it only made sense because Quill Avenue came down to the curb and then go straight, they made that Quill Avenue. But that has always been that corner, it's been the way it is. Uh, I certainly would not object at all to an FDOT study. I think it's very important. And even if they don't do the study where it's seven pits Laurel Street, if they do the study at the curb, then that's going to tell them the same thing because they want to see who goes around, goes straight down Quill Avenue and who turns. So FDOT, it's a free study. There may have been studies done, go ahead and get that done. I think that's that's the best thing to do. Now, as far as it being a shortcut to a State Road one or Reed Street, no. Some people may use it for that. St. John's Ministerial Association is across from the school. You got that, you have the school, you have a bakery. People go down there to go to businesses. And as far as the trucks, they're going down to go to the downtown businesses. Yes, a few of them are taking a shortcut down 7th Street. Why would they go to 7th Street instead of 9th? I can tell you exactly. The red light on Reed Street and the red light on St. John's is not necessarily coordinated. The red light on, on Reed Street holds longer. I have seen traffic backed up waiting for the red light on Reed Street to change backed up to the curb on Quill Avenue because it, it didn't change on Reed Street and the cars are backed all the way up. And then I've gone down and gone down 7th Street to get on Reed Street because you could not get across at 9th Street to, to Reed Street. So there's, there's a bunch of problems working in there. And I like that, you know, it needs to be addressed. People are going to ignore the signs. They run the stop signs. They ignore the do not enter. Rumble strips would be great, except the people who live there, they're going to hate it. It sounds like a plane going down a track. I mean, they're going to really, some of you might remember when they put the rumble strips on River Street by uh, Miss Larry's house. She was almost killed by people being mad going to the truck and the noise and stuff, and they city very quickly took them up. So it's something you do need to look at. Uh, it is an issue. Of course, it's been an issue for years. That street's always been there. So just look at it, but do the FDOT study. That makes sense. And make sure you're doing it for the citizens of Palatka and not for a developer who may want to uh, improve more street to get to the Florida furniture of the Wilson Cypress development. Thank you. <laughs> Use the money for Palatka. Please respond. Um, Ms. Roach. <laughs> Carol Rose, 312 Bound Street. I live four houses down from uh, Hill. I hear it all night. And it's not just gasoline, it's also bars with uh, very loud speakers, both inside and out, playing very loud music. And it's, it is a 24 7 situation. Um, it is painfully clear that um, CRA is not recognized and um, certainly not respected as its own entity. Um, this is something that does have a designated area. I do live in that designated area and I have for seven years had to hear about how the rest of the city should have the same rights that I have and the same privileges and the same funding. And it almost makes me feel guilty to live where I live. And after what I just witnessed here with honest working people that do live in the neighborhood trying to improve our neighborhood, which includes downtown South and North, um, I, I don't feel very optimistic that we can go anywhere. Um, none of you live in our district. I question why you were even on the CRA board. It doesn't make any sense to me at this point. I respect you as city commissioners, but you have no respect for my neighborhood. None. That's a bit much. Okay. Let's not. Would you like to have a conversation? We yeah. can. Yeah, let's not keep that. We can. Oh. We can. Oh. I think. Oh. And, you can make a punt. Yeah, and I, I think. Oh, I'm going to make it very professional. 
I, it's very ironic that you would make a statement, and I'm not speaking to if you have an issue with us individually. I've yet to see you set up a meeting to talk to us individually to see where it is that we stand. When we're behind this dais, we look not only to represent you, but every community in this city. That every is city. not what the CRA is? Ma'am, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm responding. Let him finish first, please, Mr. So for you to make a judgment or a statement as a whole, that's very much not, that's, that's not good. Because if we did not respect your neighborhood, we would not have ran for these positions. We respect your neighborhood just like I respect the neighborhood that I live in. I want the best for your neighborhood, like I want the best for my neighborhood and every other neighborhood in the city of Palatka. So again, if you want to pass judgment, I suggest that you have a conversation with me before you and before you collaborate and put us all together as a whole. Because again, every time I've seen you come in this commission meeting, you have not said anything positive about anybody that sit on this diet. But I've yet to see you come and say, I would like to have a meeting to, work to see where it is, where your mind is. I've yet to see that. We are only as strong as the individual that got us elected. So if you've gotten, if we as elected official, give us the opportunity to give you perspective of what we are and what we want to see for this community. But for you to come in here and you to pass judgment, that's very much disrespectful to us as elected officials. Because we give countless hours to this city, to your community that you live in, and to every other community in the city of Palatka. I do not have to contact you directly. This is an open forum. This is an open meeting. You don't have to, okay. but again- yeah, I just not have a disagreement. I'm not disagreeing, I'm just, I'm just making a statement. Because in this open forum, allow us the opportunity to correct the issue that you bring before us. But it's very much hard when we're met, always met with resistance. Okay, I do not always have resistance. Then, I have been playing this game. I'll take that back. I'll give it to you 95% of the time. It's resistance. Okay, and I, I okay, let's not go back and respond too. Okay, okay, okay. 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 thank you. Although I, I do have the right to speak. You, you do have the right to speak. Thank you, you very much. Right to public comment. Um, and I do live in that district and I do business in the downtown district in a building. So I, I am. I, I said the commission. I did not include the mayor. I said the commission. I said the commission. Yeah, no, but you. I didn't say matter there. I did not. But it's okay. Um, Commissioner Warren. I, I wholeheartedly uh, agree with Commissioner Campbell. Uh, again, I, I disagree with you based on what you're saying about the commission don't care about your community or whatever. I know this commission and this commissioner and other commissioners on this board have done uh, a lot of work, legwork, groundwork. I, if I not have worked with you directly, I have worked with others in your community as it relates to uh, providing whatever services you need in addition to any other thing. And I do the same thing for people throughout this community. So again, I, I mean, I, 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 I give you all the respect and I ask you to give us the same respect, but when you come and put a blanket, uh, 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 statement like you do that's not good is it's not right you you have not again reached out to any at least me to ask for anything that you come here and you blast us every time i have not seen one thing that you have came in and said kudos to the commission and no the mayor can't do everything by herself but i was helping to support your community when she wasn't there thank you I share the same sentiment that the rest of the commission, but at any point, and at any time, you feel that you want to change the seat. Mine are here, run forward, and help make a difference. You help make a difference, and come sit in this seat. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Okay. 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 An insult because that shouldn't be how you govern as a community. Um, I don't think one has to live in your neighborhood to love your neighborhood. Me, myself, personally, as representing us as a community, I love Polite. I love Putnam County. I want to see us thrive and I want to see us grow. And that's why I'm here. So before we pass judgment on anyone, 
we do need to know that individual. I stand by what I said. This is a CRA meeting. We have three districts. I live in the district. I have every right to state that. And I do not think it is fair for anybody to say that I am negative. You know, because I can throw it right back at you. You don't know me either. You do it. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, find, I find you to be exceedingly negative, and I didn't say that specifically. But thank you very much. And thank I stand you. on what I say. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Brooks. Uh, just recently moved. Could you please, excuse me, please give your address for the yeah. I just recently moved to 519 Kirby Street uh, in this neighborhood. Uh, we moved in July. Um, this is my first council meeting being here. So I appreciate your guys' efforts. I love seeing the activism that's going on here and seeing that there is a back and forth and this community that I have decided to move into and be part of. And I'm really happy to be part of Palaka. And I mainly wanted to put public comment on that one specific issue, but just being here today, it's is very anxious, like anxiety driving being in this room with all of this. And I think a lot of people can agree with that. Um, and, but I do, I, I appreciate what you guys do. And I appreciate that you do have their concerns. And I think there might be better ways to address them. Um, so I will get back to the current public comment that I was going to make. Um, so since I've only been here three months now, uh, both of those intersections are very dangerous in my opinion. Both on my commute to work in the morning with my wife. Uh, we both drive together, work here in Palatka for the water management district. Um, and we have tried to go, we've tried to find our commute path through that Krill navigation zone. And it is definitely hazardous no matter which way you come about it. If you're coming in, if you're going out, there is dangers on both sides. Um, as, a, as a person who comes back into the neighborhood in the evening and wants to enjoy myself, uh, go for a walk, maybe go get an ice cream at the Dairy Queen, I'm crossing that path, or if I'm going for a walk with my dogs to the waterfront, I'm crossing all these traffic that is coming and going during that time when I get off. And as a person in this community, I would love to see a study at least done. Um, not necessarily their action being taken at first, but want to be able to pro provide some sort of statistics. I'm a very stats driven person. And it sounds like you guys are too, getting that full information. And just by having a, study done, I think that would give me ease of mind. And so with that, I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further public comment? Uh, yes, I see that. Mr. Bean? You want to shout from back here? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've had enough of that? <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Commissioner, City Officials, Larry Beaton, 627 Krell Avenue, Palatka. I live at the corner of Morris and Krill. I think a lot of you know where I live. And uh, I was born in that house and I lived in it most of my life. I've seen the traffic and the traffic condition gradually increase over the years. And I have to say, this is, I see the intersection of my dining room window. So I'm eating, I get to witness everything y'all saw tonight in slides and hear people talk about it. Um, the traffic is definitely increasing. I don't think that's a surprise to any of you. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get a lot worse. As I know everybody in this room knows, this is the only location for 35 miles in either direction that you can cross the St. Thomas River. So they've got to come to Reed Street. Somehow, people are going to have to get to Reed Street from either side of the river. And the problem that you're looking at, it's on this side of the river, but there's equally difficult problems on the other side of the river that the Board of County Commissioners is going to have to address. One thing that hasn't been said tonight that uh, I want to add, because you know about the traffic and the crowds, is what I have noticed an increase in 
are semi-tractor trailers that have hazardous material placards on them. It's semi-tractor trailers loaded with about 2,000 gallons of gasoline, about 1,500 gallons of liquid oxygen, and I've seen other hazardous material here. I haven't started writing them down yet, but I hope a study will look at that. The liquid oxygen truck was confused by the curve, and he went straight down uh, what we call, or what y'all are calling, short frill. It's, it, it, uh, of course, most of our mail originally was addressed to Austin Street. But so he ended up on Laurel Street and probably was equally confused when he got to that intersection. Uh, the gentleman who spoke who lives on Laurel Street uh, came by my house the other day and saw me picking up palm branches, stopped and helped me pick up a few. But he, he talks about another problem, which I have witnessed also. Sometimes what they do, rather than waiting on the traffic light at St. Thomas and Reed on that street, they turn down Laurel Street to avoid that traffic light. So they're trying to work their way to the bridge. These trucks that have no intention of stopping the black, this is just through trucks. And the sand trucks, the loaded sand trucks that come through that intersection start about six in the morning. And the empty trucks come back the same way going back. And they're not hauling sand inside the city of Blanca. I followed two of the trucks because I had an eye appointment in St. And they were headed I-95. So these are vehicles just passing through. So this, the traffic study that you do for these intersections needs to be cohesive with working with the you can, you can show this to me. I'm finished. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any more? Anybody else for public comment? Okay, Ms. Kitchens. It's not related to the subject of Living Kitchen Stamps when you're going to sound Phil Street. I just wanted to say thank you. You're doing a darn good job at the CRA and to give a little brief history of why the City Commission is sitting the CRA. I was on the commission when we discussed whether or not to get rid of the commissioners at the CRA. The citizens and the commission felt that the best thing for the CRA was for it to be the Black City Commission because you all are our elected officials and you represent us not only as the city commission, but as the CRA. And as to the TIF districts, yes, they are exclusive to the TIF districts. However, my tax money, your tax money, and county tax money goes into those TIF districts. So we do have an input and we do care about them, even though they get special privilege, which is fine. I have no problem with that, but I just want to give a little bit of brief history. It only makes sense that you are elected officials represent us with CRA as well as the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Robson, Ms. Robson, Ms. Billy, Billy, Well, sure. I'll be just be real brief. Okay, thank you. Um, Lynn Robertson for 10 South 9th Street, the most dangerous corner in Atlanta. Very close to where you're talking about. In fact, it's ambiguous. I told you all um, a while back that in four years there were 300 accidents on that stretch. I also wanted to mention that in 2017, I called up the DOT. I asked them to do a traffic study. They did it very quickly. I think it was within three or four months it was done. I got the results so of it. Mayor Hill, and it was 10,000 vehicles per day. So we definitely need help here. I am all for um, any solution to this traffic problem. Thank you. It's horrible. People die. They burn up in cars. This is not good. With that, excuse me, close public comment. Further discussion? I think Jonathan has the direction that he stated earlier. Uh, yeah, I can um, repeat it for the record. Like 
So the first directive is to ask SDOT if they have any previous traffic studies uh, for that corridor or adjacent areas. Um, and the second is to ask FDOT for assistance with the traffic study. But then you make sure you capture the other um, roads as well to include into, into the study so that they can see how um, it does affect the impact of, 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 of the area. Anything else that people want to respond to that? Okay. With that said, um, we have no further items on the agenda. Thanks, Chief. Want to speak? Oh, please. Okay. Yeah. You're probably going to snuff up on that. Oh, that's possible. We're <laughs> 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 working. Dallas, <laughs> okay. Um, listening to what everybody said, uh, I do wholeheartedly agree as far as okay. what we've experienced and what we've seen with the change in traffic for that area. Uh, as most of you all know, if not all of you, we have been in attempting to do enforcement in that area, and we've always put it on a calendar to continue addressing it on a regular basis. I wish it was the staffing levels to where we could address it at all times throughout the entire uh, South Side Historic District, as well as the uh, downtown Palaka. Uh, we see it on Reed Street, we see, we're seeing it on 19 as well. Um, I do know with the increase in traffic, uh, some of my um, uh, Advice has been to look into other methods. Uh, we do need to look into other methods on how we can address the problem and how we can move forward. Uh, Madam Mayor, as you know, you attended the meeting with me with uh, the county and looking at how we could look at addressing um, the, the truck that's coming through the area, the truck route. We are currently launching a plan and working with Peter, our PIO, in reference to putting that information out, putting something together, similar to the information we received, as well as looking, waiting to hear back something at the OT as far as correction on some signing. So we can uh, hopefully address it in that manner. Um, to go along with some other things, and um, that's what we're working with from uh, the state level as far as from, from systems. Uh, when we look at uh, different things, I wholeheartedly agree with the uh, looking at going through at the OT to look at um, some different analysis and things that we can do for the area. It's something that uh, has been a problem for quite a while. And I believe that if we're able to um, look at this problem in a different manner, opposed to what we looked at when we had lesser traffic throughout the years, I think it will help uh, resolve problems as we continue to make future the traffic continues to increase. Thank you. Um, and just to follow up on what um, Chief Shaw said in those meetings, um, Representative Payne wasn't there physically, but he is very invested in working with FDOT to resolve some of our traffic issues. I think that's one of his goals before his term expires, just to really resolve this whole, the trucks in particular um, that are coming through non truck routes. So that is something that we're looking at. Commissioner Horn? Yeah, I, I just want to do a point of clarity in, in terms of that. If the uh, truck route and different things I need you when the mayor here was we was already looking to the, the truck route traffic and everything as it relates to the truck route, even Creole. I, I also made points about that as well. So it's not just now that we're yeah. trying to address that issue. And so I just want to make that be a point of, of, of clarity and, and Commissioner Jones and the rest of our commissioners here also we're looking into trying to reduce the traffic on Krill. So it's not something just new. So I just want to put that point of clarity. No, sir, not by all means, though. What we found is a problem that didn't develop overnight and it could be fixed overnight. It's something that we've been working and uh, chipping along at uh, over that period. And uh, you're, you're right. It's been something that's been ongoing for a couple of years now. And uh, hopefully, uh, we can bring it to a resolution soon. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Are there any other issues for the CRI board? I want to make a statement. I was always brought up with the understanding of anything that I do, I put my all into it, I put my best foot forward. And one thing that I've tried to make sure that I do as I sit behind this dais is to make decisions that are beneficial to this city. One thing that I will not do from this point forward, I have not done and will not do, is make a decision based off bits and pieces. That's not targeted to anybody, but as I sit behind this dais, I have a duty 
to make sure that when I make a vote, that I make a vote with all the information that's present. Tonight's meeting kind of disturbs me because you got individuals who are mad because we asked for additional information and clarity as to what we des or what is wanted. So I want to make it known that in this meeting, I will always ask the questions that somebody necessarily won't ask. Why? Because when I make my vote, when I make my choice and when I make my decision, I want to say I had everything in front of me, everything was clear, and I did not have one question with regards to anything that was presented or that I voted on. Thank you. Anybody else? Any further comments? I second that. <laughs> That said, do we have a motion to adjourn? Not yet. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, uh, I, I appreciate uh, past Commissioner Kitchens for coming up and enlightening us on some history. We have the former mayor here in attendance that has went through some of these decisions before. I don't know if it's proper to, to have him come some other time or tonight. I don't know about tonight, but I would like to hear, you know, history of something that we're about to make a uh, decision on. Yeah, and I, I know he had taken the city to higher heights under his leadership. It had nothing to do with. Oh, I, I did not know you take things personal. Uh, I, I would like to hear. I don't know. Just the. You say, I think that nah means not really. I am. I'm happy to watch here. Uh oh. So. Be <laughs> sure now. There's, a, there's enough people up there that they should be, that that have the history. They don't need my history. Okay. Yeah. And 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 I say that only as a freshman commission, and we can't speak on individually or together away from this diet. So there could be some information, valuable information that could be shared. Um, but I respectfully um, I respectfully respect your uh, position, sir. And, uh, again. Um, I think that was a lot of information that we got tonight to uh, hopefully we come back with more to make a more important decision. And I agree with Commissioner Campbell as well. Anybody else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs>